Let's take a look at how the characters on Mythbusters use a set of instructions to assemble a device that walks on water. And looking at different ways to walk on water, I came across this very cool thing called an aqua skipper. So I bought it, had it sent here. I'm going to put it together and see if it works. When putting together an apparatus that comes with instructions, attach the curve bar to the bottom end of the steering shaft, insert the curve bar pin. So it has a fiberglass ring in the middle of the steering shaft, insert the spring pin. The hole you use on the steering shaft depends on the user's weight the diagram three. Sticking out your tongue always helps. After some time, Adam completes the assembly and ends up with what looks like a gawky six-foot-long aluminum and fiberglass stick insect. <laughs> Not exactly something from every ninja's backpack. Over there! Someone needs rescuing! Get him! Back at the pool, Adam proudly shows Jamie his new toy. Well, that's pretty snappy. That's a uh, right and proper manufactured product. It certainly is, and they were inexpensive enough, or I picked one up for myself and figured I'd bring it as our, uh, our final piece de resistance for the day. He climbs aboard and is ready to go. Well, I kind of felt something. Sorry, Adam. I don't think anyone else did. The way it works is it has a hydrofoil at either end. The trick is to hop up and down so that the motion propels you across the surface in a gliding motion. Well, I think you're going to be getting in and out of the water quite a bit today. Jamie never had truer words been spoken. You need to somehow keep your center of gravity forward more. Same deal, you're falling backward on it. How the f has anyone figured this out the first time? More back in the legs. Jamie tries to coach Adam from the sideline. But Adam isn't going anywhere but under. No, I'm not even close to giving this up. I know the product works. It's just a function of my understanding, and I'm getting better every minute, so I'll keep on going. So, is he prepared to give up on his latest water walking endeavor? Clearly, I need more practice on this thing. Um, I've seen the videos. I know it can work. We're just out of time, and as you can see, it's pouring rain. It's time to go home. When all else fails, you read the instructions. Because so many instruction manuals are poorly written, we don't trust them, we don't want to be confused or bored by them, and we don't want to wade through their baffling writing. This lecture focuses on writing concise, easy to read, ethical, professional instructions that are interesting and useful to readers. At the conclusion of this module, you will be able to uh, understand the following lecture objectives. Ethics is central to all workplace documents. When writing technical instructions, you need to consider the following ethical issues. For functionality, be certain the instructions allow readers to successfully complete the task. For safety, be sure the instructions do not place readers in harm's way. We avoid misuse of the product by showing readers how to use the product or perform a task and how not to. You do not want your instructions to cause readers more problems. We avoid hazards, even with proper use, by explaining any risks that are inherent in the product or process. We also provide troubleshooting by covering all of the possible major problems and provide solutions that are feasible, safe, and effective. We also ensure product liability by being sure both the writer and readers understand their responsibilities and liabilities. The key elements 
for a set of instructions includes the following items. Title, byline, date, instruction, introduction, alerts, equipment needed, a parts list, steps, and a conclusion. We'll walk through several of these key elements using an example of a set of instructions for designing a container garden using succulent plants. We first begin by writing a byline which provides the person's name or company's name responsible for producing the instructions so readers can contact the appropriate person or company should the instructions fail. We also include a title and an image on the document to show the product being discussed. Without a title, how would you know if the instructions would solve the problem being faced? The title, Container Garden, names the product but does not explain why the instructions were written. The title, Designing Container Gardens with Succulent Plants, is more clear and concise. Be sure that your title explains what the instructions accomplish and what the problem is that readers solve. The placement of the date depends on the role the date plays in the instructions. Usually, the date informs the audience of the currency of instructions, and whether it's a revised set of instructions or a brand new set of instructions, A user's manual may be the only contact a company has with its customers. Therefore, an introduction should reach out to its readers by thanking them for the purchase or use of the product. The introduction uses positive words such as thank you and welcome. An introduction for instructions should tell the readers the aim of the instructions and the problem that the instructions should solve. Optional items to include in an introduction are the table of contents, an organizational structure of the company, a description of how audiences can use the instructions, or a glossary of key terms. Readers must be informed about the materials and tools they must use to complete the instructions. Usually, instructions include a list of required tools and equipment and may include images. A parts list is different than equipment list because it provides all of the parts of the product that the reader works with to complete the instructions. The parts list identifies what each part looks like and what it is called so that readers can easily identify it when needed. The parts list also serves as a checklist so that readers can confirm that all of the parts have been included with the product. An example of this would be with an Apple's iPod Touch, and that Apple includes a visual of the iPod Touch, and then what would be called a technical specification outlining all of the parts on the actual device and any of the accessories that come with the iPod Touch. And many a times the parts list is presented as an exploded view graphic or a technical specification. Steps tell readers what to do and they provide the correct sequence of tasks. Explanations provide special suggestions or tips for the reader that make completing the instructions more efficient. As you see in the example, you would have the step listed first and the explanation following it. Let's take a look at some of the characteristics of good steps. Numbered lists help readers keep track of where they are in the steps. Without numbers, readers continue to read back through the steps to relocate their position. To make steps clear and concise, you should be as simple and direct as possible. Readers have an easier time working through short, concise steps 
rather than longer ones. Single action steps avoid confusion. Each step should read as a command using a direct address to audiences. Try to write the commands in positive language. A negative example would be do not leak the container garden in direct sun during the summer heat. A positive example would be keep the container garden in a shady area during the summer heat. Avoid highly condensed language. Help your audience complete steps more easily. People read instructions because they need help. Don't compound their challenge with long words, sentences, and paragraphs. And lastly, as often as possible, use visuals to clarify steps. Showing readers how to do something is more effective than telling them. Visuals can indicate locations or what the product should look like after that step is completed. For ethical and legal reasons, instructions include alerts throughout the text to warn readers about different hazards. To clarify your alert, you should include three things. You should have a one or two word identification alerting readers. You should include the consequence of the hazard in three to five words. Or you should have the avoidance steps. For example, here we have the word identification warning. Then we have three to five uh, words telling consequences. And it says the spines can puncture your skin. We also tell them how to avoid that by saying wear a thick garden gloves before you handle spiny succulents. Warnings and cautions are placed throughout the instructions to warn readers about danger. They can appear throughout any key element of the instructions. You want to have your alerts look different than your steps and your other elements of the instructions by using large, bold lettering, larger font type, using color, or even a different font type and font size. Here are three examples mentioned in your textbook as types of alerts. Be sure that you use visually distinct icons that attract attention and distinguish the different kinds of alerts. Be sure that they are not universal, but they are generally standardized for a particular industry. And that they can alleviate any problems by ensuring that readers and writers share that common understanding of what will happen and how to avoid the problem or potential problem. After all of the steps have been presented, writers usually offer one of three kinds of final information. Instructions help customers complete a task allow them to purchase accessories, and receive answers to complaints. In your user's manual or instructions by providing a phone number, company mailing address, email address, or other means of communication. You can offer troubleshooting advice or maintenance information or additional alerts that the user needs to be aware of. In regards to editing, we want to make sure to use present tense verbs since you are talking directly to the person as he or she is using the instructions rather than using third person subjects or pronouns like he or she, his or her, just address the readers as you since they are the ones reading these set of instructions. Use imperatives whenever appropriate, meaning the command form of the verb, such as do this, read this, assemble this. Use active voice as much as possible, and be consistent in the style of writing you use. Do not flip-flop between passive voice, past tense, and present tense. And be sure to use gender-neutral language, not referring to your users just as he or she and making sure that any gender can use the set of instructions and will not feel offended by the writing.
It's important to think about the layout and design, and so that is determined by the needs of the instructions, the problems that the instructions solve, and the way the audience is likely to use the instructions. Consider using white space, clear images, good parent, uh, printing materials, but consider the cost of your instructions when you make those decisions.